What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, where we continue our discussion of the Wasabi Wallet and how this tool actually works and functions. Yesterday, we have analyzed in uh, detail on how the Chalmian coin joins work itself, uh, but now having studied this subject in theory, let's see how it is being applied in the real, actual meat space world. Well, it is cyberspace. For that, we can go to the Wasabi Wallet IO website and see that there are many Bitcoin already being fungible. So this is live and on testing. And the most recent transaction or coin joint transaction specifically has this transaction hash or ID. Now going on the Blockstream Explorer, we can see that this has 23 confirmations and that the size of this transaction is really, really large. 8,500 kilobytes, uh, which translates into over 20,000 weight units, uh, which truly is tremendously large. Uh, but we do see that <laughs> the fees being paid are ridiculously low with two Satoshis per virtual byte. Uh, that's almost nothing, okay? So fees are currently really, really cheap. Uh, so get your coin joints in because uh, this low fee environment will not last uh, for much longer. I think, I hope. <laughs> However, we see that this transaction itself, why it is so, such heavy, such a large uh, data size is because there are many, 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 many inputs and outputs and many more outputs than inputs actually, okay? Why specifically is that? Well, of course, because it is a coin join transaction. Let's first look into all the inputs, right? These are the inputs that is being provided by all the Alice's, okay? Here in the very first step. Uh, each Alice sends one or maybe several inputs and proves that Alice has control of this input with the corresponding signature, right? Uh, and we see that they are all of different size or UTXO value, right? Some are just above 0 0.1 Bitcoin, some are just below. Others are uh, over one Bitcoin or even uh, 6.8 Bitcoin. So there are many different uh, sizes of the N value field here. And they do not need to be equal, right? These are non-fungible Bitcoin in the input field right here. However, uh, we also see that there are more, input, more outputs than inputs. Well, why is that? Because once Alice has sent the input, she sends both a blinded coin join output and the change output, okay? So we actually generate additional UTXOs with this coin join. This is not a consolidation transaction, which reduces the size of UTXOs, but rather this creates additional UTXOs. Uh, however, of course, uh, with the added benefit of privacy. And there are two different types of outputs being generated. The blinded coin join uh, outputs, uh, which is then later unblinded and signed, and the change output. And this specific uh, coin join output here, we can see is always of the exact same value, 0 0.9987452. And we see that there are many, many different uh, same value outputs being generated here. And these are the previously blinded coin join outputs. Okay, so every Alice has provided this specific address, uh, but blinded with Chongyun blind signatures, and then later unblinded, signed, and again sent the signed outputs by a new identity bar. So these are the coin join outputs as we have seen in the framework. However, when we scroll down uh, sufficiently after this point right here, there are change addresses uh, with unique outputs. Okay, so the value for each of these change addresses is different. And why is that? Well, because the inputs usually do not match the blinded coin join output value. And this means that we need a change output, right? To have a new UTXO that represents the change output. And of course, the change output is always the value of the provided inputs minus the amount of the blinded coin join outputs. 
in this sense right here, we have 0 0.0998 as the coin join output. And this means that each change output is some input value minus this output equaling here, of course, the change address. So we can rather easily link one of these change outputs to one of the corresponding inputs, okay? If we actually uh, did the mass, it's rather simple arithmetic. So the change output here is not equal. There is no anonymity set, okay? Because it is a unique N value. It is a unique amount being sent in this transaction. However, as we then further also see is that uh, these entire outputs here with equal value, we have no clue of whom, you know, whom they are corresponding to. Uh, one of these outputs might belong to this person or this or this or this. We just simply cannot tell. It's mathematically impossible. Because there are so many, uh, I think these are exactly 50 outputs here. Uh, but I did not count them. <laughs> but this means that we have here an anonymity set of 50. This means that we can only say that this, trend, this address with the corresponding signature was part of the coin join. It did provide inputs, and we can't tell exactly which, which change output was corresponding to that, because again, that's a unique value. But we simply do not know for example, which specific coin join output is by this input or controlled by this input. We simply cannot tell, mathematically speaking. And this is why Traumian coin joins actually provide fungibility and privacy, because it is simply impossible to tell exactly which coin join output corresponds to which coin join input. And that is the beauty of this entire transaction. And even in the fact that not even the tumbler, not even the coordinator can know which Bob, that is which output, corresponds to which Alice, that is which input. Okay? So not only does the tumbler not know, even the blockchain does not know. And there are many, coin, many chain analysis companies trying to break your privacy and therefore, we have now a tool with Chaumian coin joins uh, that link or that break the linkage of the chain of digital signatures. We can no longer say which output belongs to which input, which in a regular transaction is rather easy. Okay. So here again, that is the beauty of this mathematical framework. Right? Uh, it is simply impossible. And especially when you do several recurring transactions, then, or, or coin drawing transactions specifically, then you increase the anonymity set even further. Because if you use the same chain of UTXO, that's the same chain of digital signatures, in several coin drawing transactions, you can achieve an anonymity set even above 50. That was the amount of equal. UTXOs generated in only one transaction. If you link coin join transactions, you generate even more potential linkages uh, from the input to the output. And that is pretty much it. That is how the coin join transaction uh, works on a theoretical level and how it is applied in the real world on mainnet. And as I said, already over 1,500 Bitcoin have been made fungible with this technique, which is phenomenal. And with every new time that we redo the coin join with a already existing coin join UTXO, the better the privacy and the better the anonymity set gets, which is phenomenal. So peers get to it. Two Satoshis provide, that's almost nothing uh, for the transaction fee and a tiny, tiny, tiny a coordinator fee for the Tumblr, it is high time that you reclaim your privacy. And in the next come, upcoming videos, we will see exactly how this actually works on well, testnet. <laughs> but Pierce, uh, thank you again very much for joining me here uh, on this series on how you can use the Wasabi wallet uh, on how to reclaim your privacy. As always, it's been a pleasure and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.